When I started this channel, my focus was on building affordable custom PCs for home office and everyday computing. But with the explosion of the once Intel exclusive Nook format, we've now have a flood of brands offering hundreds of mini PCs. These compact powerhouses have completely changed the game so much that I can't even build a desktop PC that matches their price to performance ratio, let alone their size and power efficiency. That said, mini PCs aren't for everyone. Their long-term reliability is still up for debate, and with a new off-brand model popping up almost daily, some of them are questionable. Plus, as mobile processors move away from socketed memory, upgradability is becoming a thing of the past. So what's the alternative for those who aren't sold on these tiny machines, don't want the hassle of building a small form factor PC, and don't have the space or desire for a full desktop tower? Well, enter the mini desktop. Let's check it out. It's the money. This is the DP21, and what sets it apart from the flood of mini PCs on the market comes down to two key things. First, it's made by MSI, a company that's been around since the 1980s and has a rock solid reputation in the industry. I built my first 486 PC in the 90s using a MicroStar motherboard, and to this day, both my Windows workstation and Linux test system run on MSI motherboards. Now, as a reviewer, I endeavor to stay impartial, but as a longtime PC enthusiast, I have a soft spot for the OGs like MSI, Asus, and Gigabyte. So when MSI asked if I wanted to check out their business class mini desktop, despite my first thought being, that sounds boring, I accepted the opportunity. And let's be real, business class desktops are boring, and that's kind of the point. Most people just want a reliable PC that gets the job done without a second thought. They want something dependable, very easy to service and upgrade if needed. And that brings us to the second key difference. Unlike most Nook style mini PCs, the DP21 is built with desktop components. That means everything is socketed, and upgradable from the RAM to the storage, Wi-Fi, and even the CPU. So if you're looking for a no-nonsense desktop that's compact, efficient, quiet, and can handle any administrative task that you throw at it, can the MSI DP21 deliver? That's exactly what we're gonna find out. I'll go over the specs and features, walk through the OS setup, put it through performance testing, and evaluate its efficiency and noise profile. Let's get into it. The MSI DP21 comes in multiple configurations, so I'll start with the specs and features of the unit MSI sent to me. At the end, I'll go over the configuration that makes the most sense for most users. This is the DP21 14MQ. It's a mini desktop measuring 204 by 208 by 54.8 millimeters with a total volume of just 2.3 liters. It can be positioned either horizontally or vertically using the included stand and also comes with a visa mount for securing it to the back of a monitor or a visa stand. For I.O., up front we have the power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone jacks, two USB 2.0 ports, and both a five gigabit per second USB type A and type C port. Around the back, there's the DC input for the 120 watt power supply, an HDMI and display port, each capable of supporting a monitor up to 4K at 60 Hertz, a gigabit ethernet port, three 10 gigabit per second type A ports, a 10 gigabit per second USB type C port, a second set of audio input and output jacks, and a power lick port, which allows you to turn on the system from a supported MSI display. Finally, there's a serial COM port, meaning this system still supports legacy devices that small and medium-sized businesses may still rely on, whether that's an old point-of-sale machine, a receipt printer, industrial equipment, networking hardware, lab instruments, or diagnostic tools, anything that doesn't play nice with USB to serial adapters. 
Under the hood, the system is powered by the Intel Core i7-14700, a 20-core processor. This is the low-power non-K variant, so wasn't affected by the vMin shift instability that plagued some Intel 13th and 14th gen chips. The DP21 is also available with the 14-core i5-14500 or the 4-core i3-14100 processors. For RAM, my unit has two 8GB SODIMM modules providing 16GB of DDR5-5600 memory, but it's configurable up to 64GB. Storage includes a 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD with a 1TB SSD available. For additional storage, there are two 2.5-inch drive bays, and my unit came with a 1TB 2.5-inch hard drive installed. Yes, a hard drive. This model is designed for a small business deployment where traditional hard drives still make sense in certain situations. However, MSI told me that at least in the US market, consumer versions only come with the M.2 SSD with the SATA drives as an optional upgrade. This model also includes the Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 AX211 module, which supports remote management as part of Intel's vPro feature set. It can also be configured with the Wi-Fi 7 BE200 adapter. Once everything was connected, setup was straightforward. On first power up, you're greeted by the standard Windows 11 Pro installer. This is pretty typical. However, MSI has included some of their own legal disclaimers, meaning they have likely bundled some proprietary software with Windows 11. But after completing the installation, I ran into something very disappointing. This system does indeed come preloaded with unnecessary software, including Norton 360. Now, I've got real problems with Norton 360. It's notorious for privacy concerns, bogging down system performance, and relentless monetization tactics. Let's not forget that a few years ago, Norton quietly bundled in a cryptocurrency miner, and when users activated it, thinking it was just like a security measure, Norton took a 15% cut of whatever was mined on the system. So seeing this kind of software pre-installed on an MSI system is disappointing. It's completely unnecessary. For home users, Windows Defender and regular updates provide more than enough security. And for business deployments, IT administrators handle system security anyway. But Instead of ranting about it, let me just walk you through how to get rid of it. The easiest way to remove Norton completely is to boot into Windows Safe Mode. To do that, hold Shift while clicking Restart and wait for the troubleshooting menu to appear. From there, click Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options, then Startup Settings. Hit Restart again. Once the system reboots, press 4 on your keyboard to boot into Safe Mode. Now that you're in Safe Mode, open Settings, go to Apps, find Installed Apps, scroll down to Norton 360, and click on Install. Go through the removal process. It'll probably claim that the uninstallation failed, but don't worry, just reboot the system, once you're back in Windows, Norton should be completely gone and Windows Defender will take over as the default security application. However, because it's a tricky piece of software, it'll try to reinstall itself, so you'll need to search the C drive for remnants and delete them all. You can use the same process to install any other pre-installed apps you don't need. For example, Microsoft Office is included by default. If you don't have a local Office license and prefer using the web-based apps like Office 365 or Google Docs, you may want to remove it. Another one is MSI Center. It doesn't seem particularly useful on a business class desktop, though some users might find certain features handy. At the end of the day, Windows is already bloated and way too aggressive with user data collection, so seeing it stuffed with even more unnecessary or downright shady software is frustrating. I know a lot of general users have just accepted it as normal, but personally, I'm not a fan. That's why I'll be wiping Windows completely from this system and doing a full Linux review of the DP21 over on my Linux channel. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to go over and check it out. 
Now, for Windows performance, I'm comparing the DP21 against a couple of mini PCs in the same price range and performance tier, along with the cheaper, lower spec M4 Mac Mini. The goal here is to see how a true desktop processor stacks up against mobile SOC based systems. Starting with raw CPU power, the Core i7-14700S's single core performance falls about 8 to 12% behind the Ultra 9 185H in the Geekcom and the Ryzen 9 HX370 in the B-Link. It also trails the M4 Mac Mini by a much wider margin, about 40%. In Geekbench 6 single core performance, the MSI system comes in 5 and 13% behind the Geekcom and B-Link PCs and 35% behind the Mac. For multi-core workloads, the DP21 scores 964 in Cinebench 2024, which does slightly edge out the Mac Mini, but falls 9 and 19% behind the mobile versions of the Intel and Ryzen processors. In Geekbench 6 multi-core testing, the 14700 comes close to its Intel Ultra counterpart, but still trails behind the Ryzen and Apple chips by about 10%. Now, these scores for the 14700 are slightly lower than the overall averages for the CPU, as MSI has restricted the maximum turbo power of the CPU to conform to the 120 watt total system power limit. The biggest area where desktop CPUs tend to struggle is integrated graphics, and that holds true here. The UHD graphics built into the 14700 lag far behind the competition in Geekbench 6's open GPU compute test, but benchmarks are just numbers. Let's look out how this PC performs in real world workloads, especially the kind of tasks it's actually designed for. In the Underwriter Laboratories Procyon Productivity Test, which evaluates the performance of Microsoft Office under real-world, moderately multitask workloads, the DP21's weaker single-core performance is noticeable. The MSI system comes in 14% behind the Geekcom GT1 and just 4% behind the B-Link Seer 9. In Photoshop, another application that heavily relies on single core speed with an assist from the integrated GPU and some filters and effects, the DP21 struggles even more, falling from 36 to 53% behind the other systems. While the MSI DP21's performance was a bit underwhelming compared to the competition, what really stood out was its power efficiency. As a desktop PC, I fully expected to have much higher power draw than the mobile-based mini PCs, but to my surprise, that wasn't the case. In terms of power consumption, the DP21 was essentially on par with the Intel Ultra 9-based Geekcom mini PC. During a 10-minute Cinebench 2024 multi-core test, the Core i7-14700 initially peaked at 70 watts of total package power while turbo boosting before settling at a sustained 45 watts. That's identical to the Ultra 9 SoC and significantly lower than the Ryzen HX370, which peaked at 90 watts and sustained 70 watts under load. In terms of performance per watt, that puts the DP21 about 9% behind the Geekcom GT1, but 32% more efficient than the B-Link Seer 9. This power efficiency also translates into lower temperatures with CPU thermals peaking in the low 70s, and that in turn results in a quieter system. At full load, fan noise just barely rises above background levels, measuring 42.8 decibels. Now back to the underwhelming side of things, one area where the MSI DP21 could have had significant advantage over most mini PCs is expandability, but unfortunately, it falls short. I often get comments from users, especially day traders, who need multiple display outputs. Most mini PCs only support two displays, and while the 14700 itself can handle up to four, the DP21 is still limited to just two outputs. MSI could have addressed this by adding USB 4, Thunderbolt 4, or at least USB 3.2 Gen 2 with DisplayPort Alt Mode, 
but we don't have any of that here. Another missed opportunity is PCIe expansion. One of the biggest advantage of a desktop class processor is its ample PCIe lanes, but outside of a single M.2 SSD slot and Wi-Fi slot, we don't have any access to PCIe expandability at all. Networking is also a weak spot. MSI limits us to a single gigabit ethernet port, while competitors in this price range are moving to dual 2.5 gigabit connections. For comparison, the Geekcom GT1 Mega supports up to four displays, including two full-featured USB 4 ports, offers two M.2 SSD slots, and has dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. MSI, left a lot of expandability on the table with the DP21, and that's a real missed opportunity. Finally, before wrapping up, let's talk about cost and overall value. Now, there's no direct price comparison for the sample MSI sent me, as this was actually a demo unit they configured for CES a couple months ago. However, the standard Core i7-14700 models come with 32 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte M.2 SSD priced at $1,200. That's actually a pretty competitive price, could I build a mini ITX desktop for less? Well, sure, putting together a comparable system would cost about $950, but that doesn't include centralized customer support, a three-year warranty, or full Intel vPro management features, since professional motherboards with vPro support are hard to find in the mini ITX form factor. The DP21 also sits close to the $1,000 price point of the two mini PCs I used for comparison. But keep in mind, those systems have been out for a while and have already dropped in price. If you're looking to save money, the Core i5-14500 version shaves $200 off the price with only marginally lower performance, and in most everyday computing tasks, you probably won't even notice the difference. For those who just need a basic home office or web browsing PC, MSI also is set to release an i3-14100 version for just $400, which could be an excellent value for the right user. When it comes to small to medium business deployment, I'll be honest, I've been out of the IT sector for too long to make a truly informed comparison between MSI solutions and business class offerings from like Dell, Lenovo, or HP. So. I won't weigh into that. As a home office or work from home solution though, as always, it depends. For remote workers, the remote troubleshooting and management features could be a major plus. If you're not particularly tech savvy and one morning your PC refuses to turn on, being able to pick up the phone and have IT remotely diagnose and fix the issue could be incredibly useful. But for most home users, that level of remote management probably isn't necessary. However, if the advantages I highlighted at the beginning of this video matter to you, like buying from a company with a long and trusted reputation in the tech industry, having user serviceable and upgradable components, and getting all of that in a compact, efficient, and quiet system, then the MSI DP21 can be a solid choice. That said, if you're looking for the best performance for your money, greater expandability, and possibly a PC with a bit more entertainment capability, like being able to sneak in some light gaming between conference calls, then something like the Geekcom GT1 Mega may be a better fit. The MSI DP21 isn't trying to be the most powerful or feature-packed system. It's built for reliability, efficiency, and ease of use. While it has its limitations, it also has a clear purpose, and for the right user, it could be a good fit. That said, until MSI decides that adding questionable bloatware to this system isn't beneficial to the end user, I'm hesitant to give it a full recommendation. But what do you think? Is this the kind of system you'd consider for your home office or workspace? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And if you love deep dive tech reviews like this, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.